Okay, today's video, we're gonna talk about how to promote your own YouTube channel using YouTube ads in order to increase your subscriber uh, count faster. Then the rate of increase your subscriber count is going up right now naturally by getting more organic coverage on YouTube through the search results, through being a suggested video, through people coming back to your channel naturally. I see a lot of videos on this on YouTube. Most of it, frankly, is pretty much just total bullshit from people who tried out spending, oh, I spent a, you know, a couple hundred dollars on this and this is my result. It's not enough time or money to really get anything out of that. Not to mention, they never talk about the numbers. They never talk about what the true ROI is from the campaign. We're gonna go through how to actually, actually come up with a, a, a game plan that has you know, a target and profit behind your campaign, just like you would run any other advertising campaign for anything that you were selling, whether you were selling a product or whatever you're selling, and use the targets you come up with to guide whether your campaign's working, number one, and then number two, increase your ad budget so that you can start to accelerate the growth of your campaign even faster. And this comes not from somebody who's just making this stuff up, but from myself doing this exact thing for our YouTube channel. Having a game plan when we started out the YouTube channel and then also started advertising it to actually monetize the channel right before we even started it and are following an exact game plan. And I'm gonna give you what that game plan is because frankly, A, it's working and B, it's a heck of a lot more productive then what the average person is going to do is just wing it. Oh, let's try to advertise some and see if our uh, channel grows. The rate in which you're going to get your channel to grow is going to not be, you know, it's the same thing what people do with other advertising uh, that they're doing online. They do a little bit of it. They don't track it very well. Their bank account doesn't explode or their account, you know, in this case, your YouTuber subscriber account doesn't explode. So then they say, oh, it doesn't work. And then they shut it off and you're done. The amount in which you can expect a, a realistic expectation of what this can do for your channel will be okay, but it won't be abundantly obvious just by looking at your subscriber count that you're making money. We're talking about, you know, the law of, you know, small averages here, basically. If you are math, taking a mathematical approach to this, more than likely you will be able to justify the cost. And a lot, and the bigger mistake is it's actually working, it's paying for itself, paying for itself enough that you could actually ratchet up the ad spend and scale what you've built to promote your channel, but you don't know it because you're not paying close enough attention to the numbers, and therefore you shut something down that could have made you long-term literally millions of dollars, but you were just not looking at things uh, you know, correctly enough. So I'm gonna go through what the method is to come up with the right game plan right from the start to put you in the right track for success, how to know if you're on the right track of success, and then how to scale your campaign all in one video. So with that said, I'll get right into the content. Now, everything in online marketing can be measured one way or another. That's what's so great about online marketing and advertising. You can figure out what a customer's worth, and then therefore, or client, or in this case, a subscriber, still all the same thing, and then understand whether or not the marketing or advertising that you're doing to get it is worth it for you or not. This is literally no different. And I don't see anybody else talking about the numbers in this way as it comes to promoting your YouTube channel and seeing if you track, you know, getting a, a, an ROI or not. If you're trying to build up a YouTube channel, you are regularly pumping out niche content for, which you should have a niche, um, that you're, you know, you have for your channel, not unless you're obviously doing a, a vlog, which for me, unless you're really, really uh, like a bubbly type of personality that naturally everybody wants to be around anyway, that's a really dumb way to build up a YouTube channel or an idea for a YouTube channel. You find a niche that's underserved or in which you can produce better content than the people out there already, or you feel you can produce better content and then go after that and then go after it with an actual plan to monetize before you start. So if you got the niche channel idea, uh, YouTube ads can actually supercharge the whole process of building up that channel. It'll help people 
It'll help you get discovered at a higher rate than what you would have otherwise. Now, YouTube itself isn't a way in and itself to grow a channel by itself. You use what you're doing to normally promote a channel as if you had no advertising and then just bolting on essentially the advertising to what you have to make the growth of what you have quicker. So it's not going to be a, the end all be all, you know, i.e. I can do 50 videos and then from there I can advertise it and I'm good. You know, that, I mean, and generally if all you're trying to do is run ads to make money, that's a different business model and a different strategy, which is not, you know, what we're talking about necessarily in this video, which I'll talk about a little bit as well. But, um, you know, basically what this is doing is it's just putting you out there. So everything that you're doing, instead of doing what it's going to do, it's twice or three times as, as productive and whatever time you're spending to put those niche content videos together, it's putting you in a position to get three times as much effort or results out of the effort basically that you're putting in. For every hour of effort, you're getting three times the return out of it that you would have normally got otherwise. Or another way to phrase this, by the way, is if whatever you're doing to build an organically grow, you know, do to get organic growth of your YouTube channel, of your niche YouTube channel, if it wouldn't grow on its own, the advertising isn't gonna do jack shit for you. If it is growing on its own, the advertising of your channel using YouTube ads will make it grow faster than what it could otherwise, if you know how to do it right, which I'm gonna share with you today. So it's not gonna polish a turd, <laughs> but if you have a channel that's growing on its own and you're saying, man, I wish I could get, you know, grow quicker and be like these other guys, you know, it's discouraging to see sometimes your competitors growing quicker than you are, but uh, you know, a lot of it come, could cer certainly come down to that competitor got shared by a, somebody that's a bigger name in the space and that kind of catapulted them forward. It could be that their channels and their content's just better, certainly. But in a lot of cases, you know, your content's good enough. It's just a waiting game as to eventually waiting the, you know, to, for the process to basically work that Google has to show you to somebody, learn that that person they showed you to versus another person was the right person to show your video to, and then take that learning to show it to other people that are like that and, do, and you know, their machine learning process to find you the right audience the ads actually can put you in position for them to learn kind of quicker, if you will, um, who they should show your stuff to, but you know who, you sh who should see your stuff. And instead of just waiting your turn, wait waiting patiently for the algorithm to get you shown and enough time goes past that you know Google's algorithm and YouTube's algorithm figures this stuff out on their own, you can actually just kind of force the process, or and, and I call it supercharging the process, but it just gets done what eventually is going to happen anyway sooner by putting some money up. And when I say putting money up, that doesn't mean you have to, it has to cost you anything. We can expect a return on our money if we just go in with the right plan. In fact, that should be your only plan because everybody else who talks about advertising their YouTube channel to get more subscribers or to grow their channel, they talk about it like, oh, you can invest $2 a day. And then because anybody can afford $2 a day, this is all, everybody can do this. No, that's dumb. That's not gonna barely get you any action for most spaces. And even if it does still, I don't care what nation it is, it ain't gonna really get you much. Um, ultimately, your goal is to be able to spend $100 a day. And there's a plan to get you from $2 a day to $100 a day. You don't have to start out with 100 a day, but if you're gonna, all you're gonna do is start, you know, do $2 a day, because that's typically all you can afford so to say, uh, it's basically a waste of time anyway. There is no, for most PPC or most things you run ads for, if your goal isn't to scale and have a plan to scale your ads to a high ad spend, the, all the work and all the effort to do all this, to get, you know, set it up right, it doesn't pay for itself. You make your money back once you've gotten to the point where you're sca you've scaled the ads already. Everything you do before then is about getting hitting the numbers you know you need to hit in terms of revenue generated from running your ads so that you're beyond the break even point so that you can then get to the scaling part. And then once you start scaling, whatever you did to get to the break even part pays for itself a hundred times over. So with all that said, if you're you know trying to figure this out for yourself, that's the fundamental basics behind everything that you're gonna do here to make an ads not just a little effect on what you have, but it'll triple the speed of your growth and do so with a 
literally not having to, pay, you know, you have to put any money in it besides the seed money that you used to get started with. So that said, here is the process that you want to go through, which is also the process that I followed for our own channel to start advertising our channel and you know speed up the process of growing our channel. As a quick side, I know you might be saying, oh, but you only got a thousand subscribers or whatever. It differs by niche. There's some niches where if you have a couple thousand subscribers, you can make a six-figure income already. And this PPC management services and PPC strategy channel and uh, niches is one of them. You don't need big, that, that's, that's a misconception that a lot of people have. They think they need all these subscribers. What you need is a game plan going in for a channel that you know that you can make a lot of money from the audience. You think about how to monetize an audience that's profitable when picking your channel, not kind of vice versa. So we knew if we can get subscribers, people who want to you know, learn how to do PPC right, we can get clients from that. We know what clients are worth. And so ultimately it just comes down to collecting the right audience that we know we can monetize ahead of time, not just anybody. Uh, a million subscribers for a lot of channels won't make the same amount of money that we're making on just 1,000 subscribers. So, and we're making a decent amount of money on 1,000 subscribers already. <laughs> ultimately, because one out of 100 people or one out of 50 people, basically, you don't want to become a client of our firm. So we don't need astronomical amount of numbers. What you do need is the right people to subscribe. That's the key. And the and not just the right people who, who would want to work with you or what buy from you, but in a niche where a subscriber is worth a lot of money, so to say. So anyway, with all that said, what we do is we push out content, right? We run different ads for different things that you might see if you you know, have been to our channel because I advertise to people who or been to our channel before or watched one of our videos. We So we run paid ads to get clients, but we also run ads to build the channel specifically, which is what we're talking about today. And so if you've, once you've picked a niche where you know you could easily sell something to that people that would follow videos in that niche itself, and you got the channel idea picked out, then you could run and set up one somewhere between one and five videos a week to your channel. I, I see people making the mistake thinking they're going to do a random video here and there. YouTube highly rewards consistency and frequency and the big uh, channels will all tell you this. So one to five videos a week, depending on you know the quality you're going to put in and time you're going to put into each video, which you may get a better result out of doing five you know, videos like what we do here where we're, it's just a whiteboard me talking or one video where it's highly edited, highly polished, you'll experiment with what you're going to do. But once you get to that schedule, stick to it and do not deviate. And it will take sometimes over a year before you get any reasonable traction, but it will come as long as you have information there that people actually want to see. And, and, and it's actually better than you see other people that are already succeed, succeeding in your niche because it's at that point, it's basically inevitable for you to succeed. Anyway, you make your videos regularly, okay? Once you've been run, running your videos regularly and you're collecting these people that you knew before you started the channel that you can monetize, you could sell something to them that you know that they would want, whether that's consulting services, products, whatever it is. Then the client, uh, customers slash clients start coming in. Once you get five or 10 customers or clients, specifically from the people that have seen and or follow slash subscribe to your YouTube channel, you're gonna run an audit on the current value of each sub that you get. So in other words, you should be asking every customer or client that you have coming in, where did you find us? People that you get from YouTube, you put down on a little tally on, on how many you've gotten, okay? So you may have to ask your customers coming in, if you're assuming that you're getting customers from other places, like if you have a business and you're, you're doing all this other stuff, you have to run an audit on how many customers are from YouTube that you're getting and, um, <clears throat> So what you're trying to do is then take the customers that bought in, as a result of your YouTube, how much they spent with you, and then how much they spent, not just over the first purchase, but all future purchases that, that you think that they'll be able to generate, because lifetime value of a customer is important when evaluating the ROI of a marketing, anything that you're doing with marketing. Because you generally need the lifetime value of the customer to justify the cost of the advertising. So with that said, you might figure out that if I get a when I get a customer through YouTube, the value of them to me is like five hundred dollars or whatever. Once you kind of got that figured out, 
and, and as a quick side, some people, you know, through Google ads, if you're going to run YouTube ads to promote a channel, it'll tell you if you got a subscriber from your ads. Don't worry about that. What you really want to do is just audit because ultimately people that subscribe to your channel, a lot of times you know, there's no way to effectively track if somebody came from YouTube and bought. The only way you can effectively track how many people, customers you're getting and what the average value of a YouTube customer is by running an audit, by talking to your customers yourself. Just trust me on that. But once you got that done, the next kind of step would be to come up with some video ads. I run a mix, which you should, I would recommend you do as well. Advertise a mix of your best how-to content plus have some pitch videos that you advertise to your audience. So this is the part where you're gonna, you're basically getting some success with your channel. It's growing organically. Maybe not as fast as you want, but this will help you know, push things along. You can take the other videos that you already just put out on your channel and then that whole video that you put out on your channel is the ad. You can advertise any video that you've done as an ad so that when the people that have watched your other videos now, they're on another video, you know, they went to another channel, but then now the ads for that video that they're watching on another channel is your video or another video could be certainly your be one of your best performing videos is what would be the better choice. One of your better performing videos on your channel shows up as an ad while they're watching another channel. And what I'll do is I'll have about 50 different videos of ours set up as ads. And, and the ads that they see when they go to other YouTube videos is like one of the many 50 you know, or so other videos that we put out is what they see as ads as they're on other channels. And uh, that actually gets them familiar with us because ultimately if they come to our channel and watch one video, we want them to see our other videos by means of these ads that'll allow us to do it or force it basically. So they get familiarity of our brand so that, because a lot of times it takes them seeing several videos until they build a bond with the, us, our channel. And uh, in general, when they go to search for something else in our space, because they have seen and know of us before, because they've seen us several times, then they are more likely to click on our video versus the other videos that are maybe in the search results. So, but we'll also do some pitch videos. So, if, you know, what you should do with your channel, you've already known that what you're going to sell to your audience once you have monet, you know, you've gotten traction with your channel, create a video that sells that product or service or consulting or whatever it is, and have that be one of the ads that cycle out for the user so that in terms of maximizing the value of each subscriber or, you know, person that you know, goes to your channel itself to maximize the value of each viewer slash subscriber, you actually try to pitch them on the thing that you're trying to get them to buy anyway directly so that you could suck out any value that would be able to be sucked out from your audience through the, you know, the direct product or service you're trying to sell them. So they're basically going to see different videos as they go to other channels that you have that, you know, that are naturally just your content, then you're all, they're also going to see videos that sell, you know, your product or service that you're using to monetize your audience. And some people will respond to buying that product or service on the direct sales videos that you have. And some people are going to appreciate that, they, you know, they saw another video by you that's on your channel, but the, the combination of it will give you the most profit or most help from running paid ads as the non pitch videos will get a higher rate of, return visitors to your channel and subscribers and the pitch videos will help you get a higher amount of profit per subscriber given that they normally wouldn't see that pitch video if you didn't advertise to that that, uh, that video to their your audience so we'll have i said like we do over 50 videos that we rotate out in our sequence for people who've been to our channel before but i would do at least 10 videos and as you're advertising these as you set up your youtube camp campaign to supercharge the growth of your channel, make sure to shut off display network uh, advertising. So in other words, when you advertise your YouTube channel to grow it quicker, you don't want to do that through display network. And you can Google this. I won't get into how and specifically where and, do, where and how to turn display network off because it, by default, if you don't turn it off, your ad that's supposed to promote your channel will show up as somebody's like rating CNN.com and, and there your little video ad will be there. And that's not total waste. Uh, it's not a total waste to do that, for, for, but for the most part, 
the value is not going to be there as if you were paying to have your video show up for somebody that's already on YouTube, given you're trying to promote a YouTube channel. Because it's much easier to get them to see your video at and then just go to your channel than if they were on CNN.com and saw your video to go to your channel. Because going back to your channel is basically your goal. Once they've gotten and watched so many videos on your channel and they frequent you so frequented you frequented you so often, the likelihood for them to buy something from you is high. Because ultimately what you'll find is the way that you have set up to monetize your audience, the more frequent or the more times that they've seen your your videos or number the more videos that they've watched, the more likely they are going to be to buy. So you could think about the video ads that you have are ways just to build up the frequency, you know, of people that come to your channel so that you know, after they've seen so many videos, they're much more likely to, to subscribe. And the longer they've subscribed, the more likely they are to buy whatever you use to monetize your audience. So it kind of, you know, basically to keep, you know, long story short, a lot of times where they only would have watched one video, your ads got them to watch a second and a third video, which if they didn't see that second and third video, they wouldn't have watched the next 30 videos because that second and third video was key to get them to watch the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and so on time, if that makes sense. So Google organically sends you, you know, traffic like when they're searching for something in, uh, on YouTube, they find a video about a specific topic that they wanted an answer to. They watch that video, your other video ads, get them to watch a couple other videos from you and they say, huh, this guy's actually pretty interesting or gal. I'm going to go subscribe to this channel or I'm going to go look, watch some of their other, other videos now. Whereas they would have never did it if they, you know, only watched your initial video, which solved the, or answered a question that they had at that given time. So with that said, you don't have to start with a big budget. You could start with a $10 a day budget. When we get to $10 a day budget working, we can scale up. That's the, pl that's the goal is to be able to spend more than $10 a day right from the get go. Um, what you can do, so obviously your channel's growing by a certain amount of subs. What we want to do when we start this advertising is try to see what the lift of the growth rate of our increase in subs is once we've started the advertising so we can nail it down to see what our ROI is because we know if we got an ROI, we can start to spend more on the advertising that we use to promote and get more subs on our channel so we can start growing it even quicker through the use of the advertising. And so if you're getting 30 subs a month now, and you turn on the $10 a day ad budget, advertising your channel, like I mentioned, you should do it for your own channel in the way that we're doing it for our own. You figure out that you went from on average 30 new subs a month to 50 new subs a month and it kind of holds there for the, you know, the next 90 days. Then you practically basically know that by spending the $10 a day ad budget, you get, you're getting an additional 20 subs a month. So when you have, once you be able to, or once you were able to figure that out, you could run the math here on this formula, this ROI calculator here, this ROI formula to see if the $10 a day investment that you're using to advertise your channel and get loyal subscribers to your channel is paying for itself so that we can start to advertise more and get the 20 subscribers a month that we're getting to be 40 now or 100. So, and that formula is you take the last 30 days subs uh, lift that you got. So going back to my previous example, assuming that we were getting 30 subs a month uh, before we started advertising a $10 a day budget and now we're getting 50 subs a month uh, itself. So our lift between 50 and 30 is 20. It gives us 20 additional subs a month. You could put that number 20 right here on the top part of this equate of this uh, where we divide. You put your ad budget on the bottom here. So we divide 20 by our ad budget. If, Assuming we were spending $10 a day, that would be a $300 a month ad budget. So we would divide our 20 subs a month that we're getting in addition to what we were getting before, divided by our ad budget, $300 a month. You, that when you have that number, you'll take that times or multiply it by the value per sub that you figured out here. Going back to here to reverberate uh, that again, you were to uh, monitor and audit the customers you get and find out where they come from. So you can see basically um, when you do get a customer, basically how much are they spending? And so when, cause so to now to know the average value ultimately of a sub, not just uh, average value of a sub itself, but what the, uh, or, or, or a customer that came from YouTube spent, 
but uh, itself what the uh, value per sub is. So value per sub would be how much all the customers we got from a YouTube video uh, and, and being a subscriber basically, divided by the number of subscribers that we have to get the average value per subscriber, so to say. So lifetime sales revenue of all customers we got through our YouTube channel, uh, you know, with that divided by the total subs that you have on your channel to get what the average value of a sub is. So once you take your 20 subs per month lift that you got divided by your monthly ad budget which was 300 a month, take that times, you know, the total value, like I said before, the total revenue that you've generated from all customers that came from YouTube and then divide that number by the, the number of overall subscribers you have on your YouTube channel at, the, at that time or overall, you'd get your ROI number. And that, that number is obviously either going to be positive or negative depending if you know, your ad campaign is working. If it's a positive number here, then instead of spending a $10 a day budget, you can spend you know, $15 a day and then wait 30 to 90 days longer potentially usually it's going to be like 90 days and then run the same numbers again and see if your ROI is still positive. If it is, go to $20 a day and then just keep going up and up and up as fast as you can go up while not having the ROI number go down. So you'll have to keep track of all the customers that you get that's from your YouTube channel and how much they're spending so that you can always know what this value per sub is on how much money that you've generated per sub on your channel so that you always know if your ROI is positive or negative. Also, obviously paying attention to ultimately what it looks like, how many new subs your advertising is bringing you in addition to the organic, you know, subs that you would have got organically just through Google recommending you uh, on YouTube itself. But if you, that's the formula right there that you would use and what we use to identify if our budget's great where it is, do we need to raise the budget or we need to lower the budget because it could actually go the other way. And ultimately, if your ROI here is negative, lowering your budget could fix so that your ROI is positive. Ultimately, since there is a lag, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just skip to this point here real quick. If your ROI is not right, i.e. you find out through this equation here that uh, your ROI is negative, you're losing money with the investment that you're putting into your ads, you know, your YouTube ad budget to advertise your channel. Then what you want to generally do to get the ROI up with well, the easy fix would be to do more remarketing, which I didn't uh, exactly explain how to target this for our own channel. We're going to target everybody who's been to our channel before. And I think that pretty much made that clear up front, but we also target competitor videos, i.e our direct competitors who have the same exact audience that we want, i.e. other people who talk about a PPC strategy. We also have our video ads show up on those people, those competitors, uh, competitor channels itself. So if they're watching their competitors videos, the ad that shows up on our competitors videos is our ads as well. If your ROI is negative, instead of targeting people that are on your competitors channels to kind of give you the most potential with your campaign as possible, you should probably just do remarketing since remarketing is always going to have a two to five times better ROI than targeting somebody who's never heard of you on your competitor's channel. Obviously, you want to target people on your competitor's channel though if you can get away with it and it brings a positive ROI because it gives you a greater expansion opportunity. And eventually, in order to grow to the maximum size possible, you'll have to throw in direct competitor uh, video traffic to get the most out of ads that it's possible to provide for you. Maybe you'll never be able to get an ROI advertising on your direct competitors videos. Maybe you will, but you won't, you know, obviously know until you try it. And typically you may not be able to advertise on your direct competitors videos right away and make an ROI that's positive, but eventually when you're a bigger name and it may certainly work because when you're on your competitors videos, they might have then, it's more likely they've seen you somewhere before. And because they've seen you somewhere before, the the likelihood that they're going to travel to your channel after seeing your video ad is higher. So ultimately you could just go to remarketing and use that because it has a naturally better ROI uh, to get your ROI positive. 
if uh, you're already only doing remarketing, you can actually lower your ad budget and typically get your ROI to number to be positive or go up at the very least because the lower the budget you have means the people that have been on your channel before will see your ads less frequently. And if they see your ads less frequently as a whole, the times they do see your ads, it's going to seem more novel. And then, you know, and that's on a sliding scale because ultimately you could get more out of advertising to the people who've been to your channel before the more times they see your ads. But the more times they see your ads, the less overall effectiveness each time they see your ad will go down because they get what is called ad fatigue. So lowering your ad budget right away, what you'll see is your cost per click itself. Uh, if you're dry, when you're, you know, you always can drive the traffic somewhere. We'll drive, you know, uh, itself, we can drive traffic to our website, but you can actually drive traffic to your own YouTube channel if you want, which is something that you certainly may do. You'll find though that the click-through rate on your ad will be cheaper, the lesser your budget when you're doing the remarketing to people who've been to your channel before, because the ads are not being seen as often by your, your target audience there, therefore has a better or bigger effect on the people that you're showing the ads to, because they haven't, they don't, they don't say, oh, I've seen that ad before. It's in, and, and so with that, lowering your budget can raise your ROI by not saturating the, you know, remarketing audience or, you know, again, that's people who've been to your channel before uh, with too many ads, so to say. Now, the other thing about all of this is I mentioned that if you set out your budget and kind of wait 90 days and you can see if your number here on this formula is positive, i.e., have you, with the increase in subs, also got an increase in profit so that you can justify, or sorry, uh, increase in revenue so you can justify a higher ad budget. Typically, it's gonna take, there's, a, there's always a lag time from the time that you're gonna start advertising your channel and the time you get money back given this isn't a direct response type of ad. Uh, you got to get the subscriber. The subscriber's got to have so many videos that they watch before they're willing to buy something from you. And then they're willing to buy. So that, that's a time lag. From, so that gives you a, a, you know, a time from when you initially invest into advertising that targets people who watched your channel before or com your competitors' channels before they pay out money in your bank account that you can use then to justify a higher ad budget. So there'll always be a lag from the time you dump the money into the ads and the time you get the money back. And uh, just because you don't have a positive ROI after 90 days doesn't mean it won't be there. It might just mean you have to wait 180 days before you can increase your ad budget, given the longer somebody's a subscriber that you've gotten through the ads, the more likely they are to buy. And so, um, and by the way, this is why people use building up a channel, a YouTube channel, as opposed to just advertising a product or service to someone directly, given a lot of products and services can't be sold unless they're sold through, you know, building up a follower uh, ship, if you will. And then also knowing a lot of times it can take years before a person that is following you to be willing to be a customer or, you know, sold on your brand enough to buy basically anything you offer them. So a lot of times it just, if your ROI is negative, in other words, from this equation that you put, calculate you know, your ROI from your ads, it just takes a little bit more time. If you're a little bit more patient, that $10 a day budget will eventually, the ROI on it will turn positive. You just have to wait it out. So in other words, a way, easy way to put this is invest what you can afford to lose up front. If you can afford to lose $10 a day for the next year and not have it take out your business, that's what you do. And you sit back and every 90 days you can run this equation again and see if your ROI is improving. Maybe it's a negative ROI. But if your ROI is even 10% better than the previous quarter, then you know, and then, you know, basically that's, that's, you should already be happy because you know that if that trend continues, eventually you'll have a return. And then when that returns there, you have a mechanism that where you can basically got a dial. I'll just put more money in, you get more customers out and you can keep repeating the process. So to give you an example for our firm here, uh, we found out, Using advertising, we're spending, I'll just tell you up front, we spend about $1,500 a month on advertising just to build up our subscribership on our channel, which may seem like a lot of money, but it, once you're very diligent about tracking your numbers, it's no sweat off your back at all. It, you gotta be unemotional about these decisions about what you're spending on advertising. The people who never get to be big, 
make decisions on the sound of the cost. The people who get to be millionaires and filthy rich make decisions on ROI. For us, we found out a sub, for each new sub to our channel, we're earning about $70 per sub, which is a really high number. Normally, I ain't gonna see that in most niches. Uh, but then again, the advertising cost that we use to, that it costs to get it in front of somebody who's interested in PPC, it's really high. So, and then with that, the lifetime, so, it, you know, it cost us $70 um, to uh, basically get a sub, but the lifetime value of a sub uh, is $500. I, I, th I think I, sorry, I screwed this up before. I just wanna make sure I, to, to do a sanity check here. So the, co um, the sub cost, so in terms of the advertising cost, to get, using the YouTube ads to get a sub, it was costing us about 70 bucks just to get one sub. However, the lifetime value of a sub was right around $500 for a sub. So you obviously you could do the quick mental math here yourself. If you can get a sub for 70 bucks and it, in term, you get $500 lifetime value in terms of each sub, you know, you'll pay $70 for each sub all day long. There's limitations. Obviously, going back to what I said before, when you put money into ads, it takes a while for somebody to be indoctrinated enough with our ads to want to subscribe and then see more ads to be one, you know, willing enough to buy from us. It's a long sales cycle window that a lot of times can take a year or two years or three years before somebody's ready to do business with us. So it doesn't scale very quick in that regard, but you know, our lifetime value of a client is around $50,000 because we keep clients a long time because we get good results for our clients. And so therefore, that's how we can get $500 per sub because when we get a paid client, they spend a whole lot of money with us. So this is why it's, you know, it's, it's critical to know your numbers because it's a very good chance that it might cost you 10 bucks a sub, 20 bucks a sub, 50 bucks a sub to, to generate a new sub from your ads, but it's all relative as to the lifetime value that you're able to generate per sub generated. And you can all do this math by simply using this formula here and then also keeping track of the sales you make from YouTube ad uh, referrals and tracking how much those YouTube customers you get or customers from YouTube you get spend and then dividing that by your total number of subscribers at any time to find your average value per sub and uh, you know comparing that to you know what the average sub generates for you in revenue once you get it. Given not every sub is going to buy from you, but when you divide the, you know, the total sales from all the YouTube customers you've generated divided by the number of subs you got, you can easily get the actual lifetime value per sub to know what you can spend to get a sub using the advertising and have an actual hard level and, and target basically to go for with your advertising. And really, it's just a number to stay under. Um, so you know, if you could get a five to one return in terms of I can get $5 of revenue for every uh, dollar spent on ads to, to, to generate that revenue. For most businesses, that's pretty, you know, you might be able to make that work. You might have to get $10 in revenue for every dollar put into ad spend if you're in doing product sales because the margins are less. But, you know, ultimately, you, what you, you, you figure out what you have to have ahead of time. Do I need $10 in sales revenue for every dollar I invest into these ads? Do I need five? dollars for of revenue for every dollar I put into ads, knowing that obviously the, the less sales per dollar in ad spend, the easier it is going to be for you to get the results and to scale and scale quickly. You know those numbers going in so that when you run your ads, it's a very binary thing. It becomes, am I getting you, am I getting a return or not? Am I getting a return that's acceptable enough after all my expenses to deliver this product or service to my audience? Do I have, is it enough to justify, you know, working to deliver those products or services? So it might be a five to one return you need, a 10 to one return you need, but it all comes down to, you, you can figure out whether you hit your number or not. And then it, if you need a $10 in sales of every dollar you invest in your ads, if you are getting anything over a 10 to that, you know, anything more than $10 in sales for every dollar in ads, then you know you can spend more. And then you can increase your total profit you're making from your channel 
because you're investing more into ad spend, which then generates more sales and so on and so forth. And you build up your $10 a day budget to where you're at 100 a day, to where you're at 500 a day. And this is how people build up you know, to where they're spending $50,000 a month on ad spend with, at our firm, typical client, people think the reason why they're able, you know, their competitors are able to spend all this money on ad spend is because they're rich. No, they started with a small amount of ad spend. Even if they did have a lot of money in their company that they were generating uh, on a monthly basis, they started small. They got that to work. They did a little bit more and it didn't happen overnight. They did it over two, three, four or five years, but they started with a hundred a day budget, you know, for, you know, doing like Google ads and stuff or something. And, uh, you know, over the course of five years, now they're spending three grand a day, but they did it. And every 90 days, they put a little bit, you know, 10% more ad spend, you know, 10% of what they got in revenue, put it back in ad spend 90 more days. They increase their ad spend 10 more percent, uh, or, you know, take 10% of ultimately to, to keep it simple, you know, they've ra you know, typical would be like raising your ad budget 10% every 90 days, which that doesn't sound like a lot, but over the period of five years, you get 30 extra ad spend and now you're making a few million a year just by your ad, you know, having scaled your ad campaign. So like I said in the beginning, it's just about getting the ROI that you know you need from your ads. And then it's all about scaling, taking a little bit of your profit or a little bit of your total revenue that you have in an ongoing basis and reinvesting it back in the ads. And the easiest way, by the way, to do this is just to say, if you need a 10 to one return, as long as I'm getting a 10 to one return, every dollar I get in excess of that 10 to one return goes back into the ad spend. And then, you know, obviously if your, your return will go under a 10 to one return at some point if you're investing back into it too fast. But once your return is over a 10 to one in terms of I'm getting $10 in sales versus every dollar I'm spending, then I'm always going to reinvest more into it. And uh, if it's hard for you to track how many sales you're getting from YouTube, you'll want to ask every customer, then all you do is you look at your total sales and you, you do something, you look at a metric called something uh, called MER, M-E-R, where you're looking at total sales as a ratio of ad spend on the YouTube campaign to where you could say, every dollar I make, I'll put 3% of it back into my YouTube ad campaigns to promote my channel. And then with the understanding that if you put money into the YouTube advertising, that your total revenue should go up. And when it goes up, that means the 3% of your revenue will actually be more than the ad budget you have now, which means you can invest up to the point where you're spending 3% of your revenue into ad spend. And then you, because you're spending a little bit more into YouTube ads, then your total revenue should go up again. And then you recalculate the 3% and then, you know, you keep going on that uh, level. And for a lot of businesses that we're working with, that's what we're doing. We're not looking at tracking the exact sales from people that came from YouTube. No, we're looking at just reinvesting a certain percentage of our gross revenue into the ad spend and then just keep walking it up. And the higher our sales go, the more we're spending on the ad spend. Even though we still want to run this formula to see if our YouTube traffic is actually profitable, once we already kind of know that the YouTube traffic is profitable, then it's just, we generally just work out, okay, we know this works. 5% of all of our re company revenue is going into these ads. And, um, you know, the more we make, the more we're going to put into it. So anyway, with that said, <laughs> um, that's what you do. Now, in terms of monetization, as far as that goes, uh, you may find out that you're not making enough per customer or from all the customers you're getting from YouTube ultimately. And obviously, you know, you could change your offer or what you're offering to your audience, but you do also have a couple other options to ratchet up the lifetime value of, a, of what a, each sub is worth that you're able to generate through your ads. And one of which is just by doing more pitches during the video. On my channel, you'll notice I don't pitch any of our services until the very end of our video, but I usually do always do it at the end of our video. Uh, in this case, um, or if you just simply need to get more revenue per subscriber, all you, if you were to simply pitch, you know, like other, you see other channels, they have uh, subscribe um, sponsors during their, uh, that they, you know, pitch during their channel or during their videos. Like they'll have two or three short, you know, outtakes where they, you know, run a short commercial or shout out for a sponsor. Instead of doing that, you could just pitch your product or service that you're trying to use to monetize your audience there. So increasing the number of times that you're mentioning your product or service during the videos you make themselves, 
with the understanding, obviously, you could push it too far and alienate your audience, and then you start losing subscribers because of that. But you generally, you should be able to pitch at least once in your video what you have, uh, but certainly could get away with two or three pitches during the, a longer video and not probably you know alienate your audience. And just by going from one pitch to two per video might double the lifetime value of a sub by doubling the amount of times that people are gonna evaluate your product or service you're trying to use to monetize your audience with. Obviously, in addition to that, and on the subject of sponsors, you could actually do, you know, once you get over like a thousand uh, subs, you could go and get your own sponsors, and then the money that you're using to sponsor them during your videos, that you can use that to get a higher lifetime value per sub, because that would increase the lifetime value of each sub that you're generating in terms of the equation of, all revenue uh, from your channel divided by the number of subs to justify um, or to enable you to be able to, you know, basically get paid ads to work, so to say, because you're getting, um, you have per sub that, you're, that it costs to generate a sub from your paid ads, you're able to um, <clears throat> justify that cost of the sub given that you're actually getting more revenue per sub because part of it's subsidized through the sponsorships that, you know, third party sponsorships that you have. For me, I'm not gonna do third-party sponsorships because it seems really short-sighted. Yes, I understand some YouTube creators don't wanna run a comp an actual company, they just wanna make a YouTube channel, but you can make 10 to 100 times more from the same subs by just coming out with more product and service offerings, and I mean more than just merch. I mean an actual product or service that you can promote. And a lot of times you can just link up with somebody and then white label whatever they have and make a decent amount of money doing what you do like that. And then you can then usually justify your advertising, you know, re real well, we'll just say, because you're getting a lot of value, a lot of lifetime value or a lot of value per sub from your channel because you've got real offerings. You're not repitching someone else's stuff, which once you repitch their stuff, then, you know, basically you're adding another layer of inefficiency to your monetization of your viewers. So, with all that said, I have a few other last minute tips here that I want to mention here uh, in addition to everything I just said here. Now, uh, essentially, the niches where, <clears throat> there's four tips here that I want to mention. So niches where customers are, are worth more, traffic will cost more. So don't fall into the trap as you're trying to do advertising for your channel that you're going to go for cheap clicks. This is a really dumb mistake to make. Uh, on our channel, going back to what I was kind of saying before, it costs a lot to get a sub, but that's because customers, when you get them in our niche, are worth a lot. So I'm not going to go and be like what a lot of people would naturally want to do, which it costs literally, literally 50 cents for one view of our video when we get it on a, cha a competitor's channel because advertising is worth a lot in the PPC niche. Whereas I could easily, like in our clients' businesses, I can a lot of times get a view for a penny because the audience isn't worth near as much to advertisers and these cost of a view on, you know, on, on a channel or on a video all depends on the demand for advertising on that video or channel. So with that said, don't go after cheap traffic if, you know, you're not, if, if it's costing you a lot to get a view uh, in front of the audience you really want because the, you'll get subs, you'll get subs, but the subs won't convert at the rate you want them to convert because you got the wrong people. Your goal is to advertise on other content that's basically attracting the same people that you're trying to naturally attract with your channel as is. That is people that will eventually buy your product or service from your company that you're trying to use to monetize and do monetize from your channel to begin with. So, whereas a customer's worth more, in other words. The sub's gonna cost more, the cost per view on your advertising is gonna be more. It'll all be directly interlinked, but, so don't go for the cheap traffic because you'll get shitty subscribers that won't convert, in other words. Two, don't worry about uh, dropping um, audience retention. I see other people that have made videos about how to advertise a YouTube channel to get more subscribers and to grow the channel. They'll say, well, if you start advertising you know, your videos uh, itself, you know, just your regular videos, you have those as your ads, your audience retention numbers go down. And that is true, but I'm gonna tell you, the first one I'm gonna tell you that I haven't noticed our videos being actually shown less 
when we started advertising that channel. And other people should be able to pick up. Don't you think, here, come on, just, just be real here for a second. Don't you think Google, a $100 billion a year company who specializes in advertising, can figure out when you advertise a video and the audience retention is less if the view on the video was from a ad versus from organic click to separate the two and not to screw with the organic showing and pushing of the video because somebody spent money advertising the same video and the retention wasn't matching the retention they get on their organic side. Come on, really? You really think Google's that dumb? I mean, and on top of it, with Google wanting to make money and they have PhDs sitting around, you know, in, in huge think tanks figuring, helping them figure out how to make more money in advertising or with their advertising, that they're going to penalize people for advertising their own fucking videos by being so dumb as to not have their algorithm and their program that runs the algorithm take into consideration if the views are coming from a paid ad and if so, parse out the audience retention data that's coming from paid ads to get a clear view of what how a video performs as for you know on uh, organic rankings on YouTube by itself. I mean, this is really, really this really makes me laugh that people think that YouTube has no way to differentiate paid traffic versus the organic traffic on a video and to have a different algorithm for deciding if a video is worthy for organic views based upon v organic view data versus you know looking at all sources of traffic including paid traffic to decide if a, of, of a video is uh, worthy to be shown organically more or not basically so don't in other words don't worry about dropping your your retention rate google for I, you can hear it from the, you've heard it from the horse's mouth google doesn't demote your video that you, when your audience retention goes down, but when you start to advertise your video, given the retention when somebody sees an ad versus get, you know, getting that video organically on their own is always going to be less. But Google accounts for this as a part of their algorithm to ignore the, you know, the stats that they're picking up from somebody who watches that same video from a paid ad versus organic. Okay, number three uh, tip here. The reason mar remarketing works is because of a familiarity and b authority so i touched on this earlier essentially the reason why it works to get boost the amount of, the rate of subscriber growth on your channel using paid ads showing your videos in paid ads while people are watching other channels and other videos that aren't yours is because it's like you know music haven't you ever uh you kind of realized when you hear a brand new song the first time you hear it you don't particularly like it but once you've heard that song a few times, you can like it. So it you have to, and the reason for that is your brain likes stuff that they're that it's more familiar with. So like I said before, if somebody saw your video once, there's chances are because they don't know anything about you or your brand or and haven't got familiar with your brand, the likelihood that they're going to be willing to wa watch a second video is not very high. But the chances that they would want to watch a third video after watching a second video is much higher than somebody willing to watch a second video having seen only one video from you. And that actually goes the further and further, you know, the number of videos that they've seen in concession from you. So the advertising forces the user to get familiar with your brand so that you become a familiar brand so that when they think of getting content from your niche, you become the first person that they think of and then navigate and, and go to you. Whereas you, if you didn't, you didn't build enough, but enough of a relationship with the user the first time they seen your video that the video organic views that you do get even though they're the right traffic you just didn't have a chance because you didn't build up quite a relationship up with them yet just with that one video view whereas you can artificially create the second and third video view and then get the next 30 views for free after that because you strategically placed your video to be seen by somebody who's watched one video to make sure they see it a couple more times to get that whole th process started that's how they're able to take a little bit of money and turn it into a lot of views and a lot of value. Um, the authority is the other thing though. Uh, people don't trust somebody that they don't think is an authority. And people a lot of times think 
a company is an authority or someone's an authority, the more repetition that they've seen, more times that they've seen something. It's similar to politicians. You know, during election time, they have all those damn street signs that they litter everywhere, like on the, you know, um, near the stop signs and everything. What do they do? They have those plastic corrugated signs that they jam into the ground. Does anybody, they don't even say anything about what the politician does. It just has, you know, Romney for governor or governor. And um, that's it. And then they do that all over the city. What, do you think all these people are stupid? Or do you think that these, this actually has a purpose? It has results. They have multi-million dollar think tanks to, and political strategists to guide their campaigns. They know that these signs work. The reason why they work is because once you've seen, you've got that name recognition, you now think that that candidate is the top candidate, even though they're not the top candidate. You're basically brainwashing the user into having th them think that you're the top shit when you're not, and you artificially create it. This, these video ads is the same thing. Once they've seen several of your ads, even though they know it's a paid ad that they're being shown, ultimately when they go to see another, they wanna watch another PPC video from us, we're the first person they think of, uh, so they go to us to, uh, first. And also, like I said before, if they're gonna search for something related to PPC, and there's five videos there, my video's one of them, they're three, four, five times as likely to click on my video now, because they saw several videos from us already, and therefore think that our information's the most authoritative because they've seen more information from our brand than other brands, and that's how psychology works. So anyway, that's, uh, something else to consider. And then number four here is the last thing I'll say to cap off this video. A pitch video might be the better option. So instead of running and building an organic channel that's supposed to build up an organic audience and then advertising to get people to subscribe to that channel, you may just be better off with a whole different business model. Instead of trying to build an audience to buy your product or service, that product or service you're trying to sell, create a video that sells just that product or service and then just have your whoever you want to buy it, see that ad, drive them to a landing page. Because that's your other option always with this. You could have, and it's one general business type over the other. Like I said, some services like our service, you can't sell directly and say, hey, PPC service, buy it here because nobody trusts you. So you, you know, us building an audience and then trying to sell to the audience is the only effective way. But for a lot of you guys that are trying to sell products, it would just be more efficient to go after that person with a really good sizzle video that has you know, your product and all its features and try to get it, you know, sell it to them directly versus having to build an audience. In terms of money and time and effort put in, which obviously time is, a, you know, is equivalent to money, so to say, and that time you could be spending doing something that maybe generates money directly, which then you use that to kickstart your ad spend for the ad that pitches the product directly to the person you want to buy instead of getting them to subscribe first and then eventually hopefully buy. So anyway, just something to consider here. Your whole approach to business may be off and you may be better off with a different business model based upon what you're trying to pitch or, or offer. And you know, some, some things is gonna, it's gonna be more profitable going directly to the consumer with a direct pitch. Sometimes it's gonna be better building up a channel, building an audience, and then selling to them after a period of time. So what I'm saying is you should just consider both thoroughly before you decide on going long-term with one or the other. Or if you're not sure, you try to test both. Uh, we kind of do a, um, a little bit of a combination of both. But certainly in our business, building an audience is by far better. The only problem with building an audience is, like we talked about in this video, it takes a while from the time that you start to, you know, get the subscriber even to the time they're ready to buy. It really stretches out the time. But once you've got the subscriber base and you're naturally getting more subscribers because you've already got a big subscribership, the profit margins on that business is way higher because you have no marketing cost at some point. So anyway, with all that said, I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of other content like this on this channel. If you're learning, uh, trying to learn how to do paid ads to make millions of dollars uh, with your business. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the best content on YouTube bar none as far as to do that. And the reason why we have that is because I personally myself manage dozens of PPC campaigns for clients at any given time. Constantly am testing different things that, you know, that work or don't work or could work on you know, YouTube ads, 
Google ads, Facebook ads, and so forth, and I bring them to you on this channel and tell you what we find. And we tell you what works, we tell you what doesn't work so you can stay away from it. And therefore, it's the best information you're gonna basically find on YouTube because of that fact and that reason. I also have a blog, by the way, at guaranteedppc.com slash blog, where you can also find great information for myself there on case studies and so forth, how to make money with PPC, which there you can find information on a more step-by-step -step or individualized basis, which you might be more helpful to you. But you can also find great information there. And if you like the channel, you'll like the blog. I'll tell you that. Uh, I would appreciate it if you like the video uh, so we can get the video out there. It really should uh, do that for us. And um, if you got some value out of the video. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw today or have questions about PPC in general, Leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. Um, if you are looking to have somebody manage your PPC on a guaranteed basis, our firm actually offers this. Uh, we offer full services in terms of campaign setup, landing page setup, banner ad setup, tracking, everything that you need to get good results with PPC. So if you don't have the time to do it, we're the, you're gonna find, this is the best uh, company in the business that's gonna be able to help you out with the no nonsense approach no nonsense approach to be able to do it. We also have a new program where we're offering, because we've worked in hundreds of niches now, uh, turnkey PPC campaigns. So if you're not looking for a full service PPC agency to help you, you know, run your campaign from start to finish, if you're looking to get results in your market, and we've worked in your market before, and you're not in direct competition with a client that we have geographically, we can actually take the campaigns that already work for your market and let you use the campaign templates, landing page templates, and so forth that work for your market already, in which we could tell you the results we get in that market and have gotten in that market before to copy and paste in your account to basically get the same results we would have got through us anyway and for a much lower cost. So if you want to manage an account yourself, instead of having to learn all this stuff for yourself, why not just take the results we've gotten in your market already and you know basically use that? So, but. You know, we may have results in your market, maybe we won't. The only way to know is to you know, reach out and contact us to find out. If we do, we'll let you know what results we have and if we can give you, um, you know, we can work with you or not in that regard. But um, ultimately, that's another option you have. We've had clients who literally take our campaign templates because they work so good and they outperform the competition so well, like in local markets, where you could start, literally just start a business doing something that we've gotten results in uh, before outsource all the service work to another provider in the area and because they have the hands on that campaign that works in that space and landing pages that work in that space they have a passive income business that's being you know and passive revenue generated for themselves having the access and their hands on that campaign um, given it's so efficient so anyway with that said reach out to us if you're interested about anything like that I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It was highly educational for you. And I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great strategy for you then to, to follow and make some more money from as well. See you then.